Hey everyone, welcome back to Bear's Workshop. I'm Bear, and in today's video, we are gonna go over different reasons why a generator in an RV will not start. And we're gonna go over different reasons why a generator will start and then stop. We're gonna be two different places in this. We're gonna be in the RV and we're gonna be outside the RV. So for right now, let's go in the RV and take a look at the first group of things that could cause your generator not to start. All right, so there are many reasons why a generator won't start. We're gonna go over a couple of them in here, and depending on what your situation is, something I should be able to tell you something that's gonna come up that might, might fix that. It's gonna match up to your situation. The first thing is, you've got your generator switch right here. You've got an on and off, and even though uh, you think that most people would know this, some people don't know this, but you need to hold the button down for uh, several seconds and I don't know if you can see it, but a light came on. That's actually the primer that is pushing gas into the generator. It's priming the gas. And if you don't do it, pretty much your generator is not going to start. Now, if your generator hasn't started in a long time, you definitely need to do this and you may need to do it a couple of times. Now to start the generator, you just hit the on button and we can hear my generator cranking and it's not starting. There it goes. We're going to go ahead and shut it off. A lot of times my generator doesn't start on the first attempt and you can't hold it for more than 30 seconds otherwise you're going to generate a, an error code of four. Uh, that would be four flashing lights that will come up on the generator and that's just saying that you've over cranked it. The system prevents itself from being over cranked. So you just want to go for about 10 seconds, stop, prime it again, do it again, see if it starts. You want to do that, you may have to do that up to three times. Okay, so prime first and then hit the on button and hold that down and see if it will start. Now, if it doesn't, um, and you, you haven't checked anything else, you can go out to the actual generator and there's another switch just like this and you can try it actually at the generator itself. Sometimes that makes a difference. When you go to turn on your generator and you hit the button and it doesn't crank or you just hear a crank and it just stops, you may have a dead battery for your house battery. Uh, so the first thing you're, you're gonna wanna check is your aux battery. Uh, my button's right here, I can press it down. I can't give you the exact number and it's gonna, I think it's gonna vary depending on how strong the batteries are, but mine needs to be above 11 volts in order for my generator to start. If, I have, if, if it's been sitting for a while I, I, and I don't have enough voltage, it will not start the, the, the battery. Now, if you plug it in uh, to your house, that's gonna charge your aux batteries and that, that can help get you running. Or if you don't even have aux batteries, if you plug it into another source, uh, that will be that should be good enough to uh, when you plug it into a uh, let's say a, a campground that should be enough to get your generator started but I can't imagine why you wouldn't have batteries unless you just have dead batteries so checking your batteries is going to be the next step so it, and that's pretty much a no crank situation make, making sure you have enough voltage so another thing to check is to make sure that your RV is level um, there isn't necessarily a level sensor in your generator, but what there is is uh, an oil level. And if your, your RV is off level and your oil is low, it's maybe sensing that the oil is low and it will not start. That's a, a big reason why these generators often don't start. Oil level, there, it can be that low on your stick and you, your generator could start. This would be a start and stop situation. What happens is the generator starts up, the oil sensor says that there's low oil pressure and there's low oil pressure because you could be like a half a quart low, um, even less than that. And my generator has that issue where every so many hours, uh, it burns a little bit of oil and then the, then the oil level's low and the generator will start and it will stop. We go out there, we put in just a little bit of oil half a quart, quarter of a quart, and then it starts and it runs just fine. So being on level will move your oil and change, and the oil sensor will pick up that there's low oil pressure and that will cause it not to start. And that will be an error code of two flashing lights that you'll see on your generator. So that's something to look for. If you see two flashing lights, it's an oil pressure sensor is going off. That could be due to catastrophic failure or could just need a little bit of oil. I've had both in, with my generator. I had catastrophic failure and they had to rebuild the motor. I also had low oil. So we put a little bit of oil in and then it worked. So level related to oil level. 
or oil level just being low. You could be level and have low oil. So that's, that's something that you're gonna need to check. Okay, if your generator hasn't run in a while, bad gas. I had a fifth wheel that had a generator and the fifth wheel sat for like six months and I turned on my generator and it would start and <laughs> it'd start coughing. I actually was able to uh, check my choke and if I put my choke at halfway, the bad gas would run through it and it actually ran for a little bit and that's how I got all the bad gas out was I ran it at half choke. I tied up the choke to, in order to do this, but it ran and it got through the bad gas. Okay, so bad gas is something to check for. Now in a class A, different from a fifth wheel, your gas level usually is set for a quarter of a tank. The, the generator is gas, the RV is gas, they run off the same tank. So if the fuel level for the, for the RV, well, you can see on the dash, you know where your fuel level is. If that goes below a quarter, the generator will just stop running on you. You can restart it, it's going to restart, and then it's going to stop running on you again once it senses that we're, we're at too low of a level. So that's going to be a start-stop situation. That's something you look for. How much gas you have. Bad gas is going to run rough, may not even start. And when we get outside, I'll tell you one way you can check to see if it's bad gas fairly easy besides smelling it. Because generators won't run on bad gas like an engine will. Engines are more forgiving of bad gas than a generator or any small engine type of stuff. They're very particular with bad gas. You could take bad gas out of a mower, put it in a car, and it's gonna work. Not as well as it should, but it'll work. So some other shutdown codes that you may get, which are gonna be just the, the light flashing on the generator. We talked about number two is an oil pressure. We talked about number four is over cranking. Number one is temperature. There is coolant that goes into your generator and you got to check your, your your coolant levels. Make sure that if you can error code one, check your coolant level. If you get three flashing lights, this is a service fault. This is where you're going to have to get into it and find out what your error, your real error code is. And there's a process to do that. And there's links around the internet on how to find your what your service codes are. This is typically you're going to get into some bad stuff where you're going to have to get the flashing lights. It's going to flash a certain amount of times might flash two times and then it's going to pause and then it's going to flash another couple of times and maybe give you a four and then you've got error code 24 and you got to look that up and in order to do that i believe you hold the prime down for 30 seconds at the generator and then it'll it'll go up but i'm not 100 percent sure on that so let's go take a look outside let's look at the generator and some other things that can cause your generator not to start whether it's been sitting for a while or whether it ran last week let's go take a look Okay, we're now outside. We're going to take a look at the generator. We're going to take the cover off and go over a couple of things. All right, so our oil level is right here. This is where we check the oil. You're going to take, you would just simply take this out, unscrew it. It screws in like 40 times. You'd wipe this off. You check your oil level and see whether or not you have to add. So, and then it just goes back in and you add it right through there also. Now, the first thing I would check if I had uh, no crank and a good battery is I would check my cables here These are make sure everything is connected and we've got a bunch of wires over here uh, This is obviously your positive going in you want to make sure that that's tight. This is fortunately, okay um, Check your circuit breakers if you actually get your generator to start, but you don't have any power You want to check your circuit breakers right here. Here's your other start button again when you prime it you hold it down like that, you wait for the light to come on, and then you go ahead and hit the button. So that's how it's gonna start out here. Right behind here is your air filter, and you wanna check this. If this is clogged up to the point where that air cannot get in here, your generator will not start. This one is a, a little nasty. You can see it, it probably needs replacement. So that's gonna, I'll have to put that on the list of things to do, but we do need a new air filter on this one. But again, make sure it's not clogged up because that will stop the generator from starting if there is no airflow. That'd be a crank, no start. This is where your choke is. You wanna make sure all your, all your pieces are moving freely. If, uh, if they're not, that could, if your choke is closed and it needs to be open or vice versa, it's not gonna start. Um, 
Make sure all your wires are connected here. You want to check your spark plug. It's going to do, depending on where, um, uh, what model you have is going to depend on where it, where it's at. Okay. Also, your coolant levels. I'm not sure where the coolant levels are on this. I've never had that problem, but this does require coolant according to the uh, the manual. So that would be the uh, the one flashing light. Also, I believe somewhere around here is a fuel filter. You want to check to make sure that that is not clogged. Now, if you think you have fuel problems, the best thing that I would suggest you do to determine whether you have a bad fuel pump, a bad fuel filter, bad gas, um, whether you're low on gas, any, any gas related issues, what I would do to get this, to see if it's related to the gas, take off the air filter, grab a can of starter fluid, spray it in into the, into the carburetor here, spray it right into here, and then crank the engine. Now if the engine starts, that tells you you do have some sort of fuel problem and there's not something else going on. It can rule out a lot of things. But with the starter fluid, you're directly injecting fuel into the carburetor. So if there's a clogged fuel filter, if there's bad gas, if the fuel pump is not pumping, it will it bypasses all that. And you, you throw in that starter fluid and it runs, that's going to tell you that you have a fuel problem. All right, that's pretty much going to wrap it up. With all that information, if your generator is not starting, you want to look for the error codes to see if you have an error code three because that's probably going to be you're probably going to have some sort of service fault in it so that's going to be doing this holding this down i believe for 30 seconds letting go and you'll you should get a code that may or may not be correct but look it up uh, because you're going to need the error codes of whatever it comes up as and that's something that usually is going to require service so again remember check all your wiring make sure everything's moving nothing's stuck your oil level your air filter your fuel pump your fuel filter all those things are what you want to do, want to look at you have any questions with your generator go ahead comment down below maybe I can help you out maybe not but I'll give it a shot go ahead if you like this video hit the like button hit the subscribe button we'll have more videos coming out soon thanks for watching goodbye Bye.